October 31, 2024, the Federal Aviation Administration drops a bombshell on General Aviation, Airworthiness Directive 2024-21-102 grounds the backbone of American flying. 16,000 Lycoming IO-360 engines suddenly become potential death traps. Bronze contamination, catastrophic connecting rod failure, total engine power loss without warning. This isn't about routine maintenance. This is about a cover-up decades in the making where corporate greed trumped pilot safety at every turn. The Lycoming IO360 powers everything that keeps general aviation alive. Cessna 172S training tomorrow's pilots, Piper Arrows carrying families on vacation, Diamond DA-40S flying business executives, Robinson R-44 helicopters conducting life-saving medical evacuations. For over 60 years, this engine has been marketed as the gold standard of reliability, the engine pilots stake their lives on. Then came October 31st, 2024. The FAA's airworthiness directive reads like a nightmare scenario. Visual inspections required at every oil change, searching for bronze particles, the telltale sign that connecting rod bushings are disintegrating inside the engine. Finding them means immediate grounding. Missing them could mean engine failure without warning. But here's what makes this truly shocking. This wasn't a sudden discovery. The contamination traces back to defective bushings manufactured between 2009 and 2017. Eight years of production, eight years of engines assembled with components that Lycoming now admits were never right, eight years of aircraft taking off with parts that were slowly destroying themselves from within. Flight schools built their entire fleets around this engine. Insurance companies set rates based on its stellar reputation. Pilots trusted it with their lives every single day. Yet here we are, facing the reality that 16,000 engines, each one a potential time bomb according to the FAA's own assessment, have been flying overhead while carrying a hidden defect that could kill without warning. The directive affects the very foundation of American aviation, turning the most trusted engine in the sky into a question mark that haunts every pre-flight inspection. The beauty of aircraft engines lies in their precision. Thousands of parts working in perfect harmony, each component designed to handle extreme conditions that would destroy ordinary machinery. But when one critical part fails, the entire system becomes a weapon against itself. Inside the IO360, connecting rod bushings serve a crucial role. They allow the connecting rods to move smoothly while handling enormous forces. When these bushings function properly, they wear gradually and predictably over thousands of flight hours. When they fail, they shed bronze particles that circulate through the oil system like microscopic bullets. Tom Martinez, an A&P mechanic with 30 years of experience, remembers the first time he encountered this contamination. 2011, maybe 2012, he recalls. IO360 comes in for its 200-hour overhaul. Everything looks good until I pull the oil screen. Bronze everywhere. Not copper, which might be normal bearing wear. Bronze. That meant bushings. Martinez reported his findings to Lycoming. Their response was dismissive. The wear was within acceptable limits. No service bulletin, no safety alert, just a recommendation to monitor the situation. But Martinez knew better. He started keeping his own records, photographing every contaminated oil screen, documenting every worn bushing. He wasn't alone. Across the country, mechanics were seeing similar patterns. Online forums buzzed with discussions about bronze contamination. Some operators started doing 50-hour oil changes instead of the recommended 100. Others invested in sophisticated oil analysis programs, desperately searching for early warning signs. The bronze particles don't just sit harmlessly in the oil. They embed in bearings, score cylinder walls, and accumulate in critical passages. 
Most get caught by filters, but the damage is already done. The engine slowly destroys itself from within, showing few external symptoms until catastrophic failure strikes. This isn't Lycoming's first dance with deadly deception. February 15, 2005, a Texas jury delivered a stunning $96 million verdict against Textron Lycoming. Not for negligence, not for product liability, for fraud. The case centered on crankshaft failures in high-horsepower TIO 540 engines that killed 12 people between 2000 and 2002. Initially, Lycoming played their standard playbook, Blame the supplier. Interstate Southwest, Lycoming's crankshaft supplier, was accused of producing defective forgings. Lycoming claimed Interstate had overheated the steel during production, creating weak points that led to catastrophic failures. The FAA accepted this explanation. Emergency directives were issued, engines were grounded, and Interstate's reputation was destroyed. But during the trial, a very different story emerged. Internal Lycoming documents revealed they knew the real problem all along. Their crankshaft design was fundamentally flawed. The geometry created stress concentrations that would inevitably lead to failure, regardless of the supplier's manufacturing quality. Even more damning, Lycoming engineers had warned management about these design flaws. Solutions had been proposed. Improved designs had been developed. All of it had been buried to avoid the massive cost of a recall. Instead of fixing the problem, they chose to sacrifice their supplier's reputation and let pilots continue flying with defective engines. The jury found evidence of deliberate cover-up. Email chains showed executives discussing how to manage the crisis without admitting fault. Technical reports were selectively edited to support their narrative. When failures occurred, investigators were directed to focus on external factors rather than inherent design problems. Between 2005 and 2006, the FAA issued multiple airworthiness directives affecting thousands of Lycoming engines. Over 5,000 crankshafts required immediate retirement. Another 3,800 engines needed complete replacement. The financial impact was staggering but the human cost of the deception was far worse. In 2009, Lycoming made a decision that would eventually put 16,000 engines at risk. Facing pressure to reduce costs in a competitive market, they switched suppliers for their connecting rod bushings. The new supplier offered a better price point, promising identical specifications to the original parts. On paper, everything looked perfect. The bushings met dimensional requirements. They passed quality control inspections. They were certified for installation in production engines. But there was a critical problem that either nobody caught or nobody wanted to catch. The bronze alloy was subtly different. Under the extreme conditions inside an aircraft engine, temperatures cycling from arctic cold to blazing heat, pressures that would crush ordinary metals, vibrations that could shake apart lesser machines, these bushings behaved unpredictably. Instead of wearing gradually over time, they could shift in their housings, creating stress points that shouldn't exist. This movement allowed bronze particles to break free, circulating through the oil system and causing damage throughout the engine. Most particles would be caught by filters during routine maintenance, but some would embed in critical components, slowly degrading engine reliability with each flight hour. The most infuriating revelation came years later during investigations. In 2015, Lycoming was offered upgraded bushings with improved bronze alloy specifically designed to prevent the contamination issue. The supplier had identified the problem and developed a solution. The cost difference? Just $12 per engine. Lycoming declined, citing unnecessary expense for unproven benefit. 
executives made a calculated decision that $12 per engine wasn't worth preventing a problem they already knew existed. They chose short-term profit margins over long-term safety, condemning thousands of engines to carry hidden defects that would eventually manifest as catastrophic failures. This decision reveals the true nature of corporate priorities in aviation manufacturing when faced with a choice between safety and savings, even minimal savings of $12 per engine, profit wins every time. For years, Lycoming successfully managed the bronze contamination crisis through voluntary service bulletins and careful public relations. Mechanics reported unusual wear patterns, but the company dismissed concerns as isolated incidents. The regulatory machinery moved slowly, accepting manufacturer explanations, while scattered failures were explained away as statistical anomalies. Then 2017 changed everything. Three catastrophic connecting rod failures within six months shattered Lycoming's carefully constructed narrative. All three involved training aircraft, Cessna 172s used by flight schools to train new pilots. These weren't high-time engines on their last legs. The failures occurred at 627 hours, 1,400 hours, and 2,100 hours respectively, well below the 2,000-hour recommended overhaul interval. The first failure in March resulted in a successful emergency landing. The pilot's skill and quick thinking prevented what could have been a fatal accident. The second failure in August wasn't as fortunate. The student pilot suffered serious injuries when the engine seized at 2,000 feet, forcing a hard landing in difficult terrain. The third failure in October was devastating. A flight instructor and student died when the connecting rod punched through the engine case, severing critical control cables. The aircraft became uncontrollable, spiraling into the ground with no opportunity for emergency procedures. Investigations revealed the smoking gun Lycoming had fought to keep hidden. All three engines showed evidence of bronze contamination in their oil dating back months before the failures. Warning signs had been present during routine maintenance, but maintenance logs showed normal oil changes with no notation of unusual wear. The engines had been slowly destroying themselves from within, and nobody noticed until it was too late. These failures couldn't be dismissed as isolated incidents or blamed on external factors. The pattern was clear, the cause was identified, and the liability exposure was enormous. Lycoming could no longer ignore the crisis they had created through cost-cutting decisions and willful blindness to emerging safety issues. When Airworthiness Directive 2024-21-102 became effective on December 5, 2024, it marked a watershed moment that would reshape general aviation forever. The FAA's cost estimate of $17.3 million for compliance seemed almost insultingly low to operators who understood the real impact of grounding 16,000 engines for mandatory inspections. Consider a typical flight school with 20 IO360 powered Cessna 172s. Each inspection removes an aircraft from service for at least a day. If bronze contamination is discovered, downtime extends to weeks while waiting for replacement parts and scheduling maintenance. The lost revenue from grounded aircraft dwarfs the actual repair costs, creating a cascading financial crisis. Students transfer to other schools when aircraft aren't available. Flight instructors lose income and seek employment elsewhere. The entire business model that depends on aircraft utilization collapses under the weight of uncertain maintenance schedules. Many flight schools already operating on thin margins face bankruptcy from compliance costs alone. Private owners confront a different nightmare. They purchased aircraft believing the Lycoming engine represented the pinnacle of reliability. Now they discover their engines might contain defective parts installed years ago during manufacturing or overhaul. The pre-purchase inspections they paid thousands for didn't catch it. 
Annual inspections performed by certified mechanics missed it. They've been unknowingly flying time bombs. The directive's international impact amplifies the crisis. Transport Canada, ESA and other regulators typically follow FAA guidance on American manufactured engines. Suddenly, operators worldwide face identical inspection requirements, groundings and costs. In developing nations where general aviation provides essential services, medical transport, agricultural support, remote area access, grounded aircraft mean communities cut off from vital supplies. Aircraft values plummet overnight. Insurance premiums skyrocket to reflect increased risk. The entire general aviation ecosystem, already fragile from decades of declining participation, absorbs another devastating blow that pushes marginal operators toward bankruptcy and discourages new entrants from joining the aviation community. As 2025 draws to a close, the same systemic failures that created the 2005 crankshaft crisis and enabled the 2024 bushing contamination scandal remain firmly entrenched. The certification process, largely unchanged since the 1960s, continues to assume manufacturers will act in good faith and voluntarily report safety issues. When profit margins are thin and liability exposure is enormous, this honor system inevitably breaks down. Lycoming's response to the current crisis follows their established playbook with depressing predictability. They emphasize their engine's overall safety record, citing millions of successful flight hours. They provide statistics showing the vast majority of engines operate without incident. They offer warranty support and technical assistance while carefully avoiding admission of systematic failure or acceptance of full responsibility. The company points to their 2017 service bulletin as evidence of responsible action, subtly implying that operators who ignored voluntary safety measures share blame for subsequent failures. This narrative ignores fundamental questions. Why were defective parts installed initially? How did non-conforming bushings pass quality control for eight years? Why did catastrophic failures have to occur before mandatory action was taken? The FAA's seven-year delay between initial service bulletins and mandatory inspections highlights the agency's reactive approach to safety regulation. Understaffed and overwhelmed, regulators often accept manufacturer explanations at face value, only springing into action when accidents pile up or juries award massive verdicts. New technologies offer marginal hope for breaking this cycle. Digital engine monitoring systems can detect subtle performance changes that might indicate developing problems. Sophisticated oil analysis programs can identify contamination before it becomes critical. Artificial intelligence might eventually predict failures before they occur. But these solutions require investments that cash-strapped operators can't afford. The aviation community has learned to police itself, no longer trusting manufacturers or regulators to prioritize safety over profits. Until economic incentives align with safety priorities, pilots will continue making calculated risks every time they turn that ignition key, hoping their engine isn't among the unlucky ones carrying hidden defects. The Lycoming IO360 crisis exposes an industry that repeatedly chooses profits over lives, then feigns surprise when bills come due. 16,000 engines remain in service, most running perfectly, some carrying hidden time bombs. Every pilot turning that key makes a calculation between statistical probability and practical necessity. The question haunting aviation remains unanswered. When will we finally learn? Watch our next investigation into Boeing's latest manufacturing scandal.